Grey Wardens built this prison to contain one of the most powerful darkspawn we've ever encountered. Are you talking about Corypheus? He calls like an old god. He mimics their cry. Use your blood. Free him and slay him. We sought the golden light. If you know where the champion is, you must tell me. The champion could stop this madness before it's too late. He may be the only one who can. In that case, I wish I could help you. <laughs> Solas confirms the heavens are scarred but calm. The breach is sealed. Forces approaching! To arms! I'm Cole. I came to warn you. To help. The Templars come to kill you. The Red Templars went to the Elder One. Pretender, you toy with forces beyond your ken no more. Know me. Know what you have pretended to be. Exalt the Elder One, the will that is Corypheus. You interrupted a ritual years in the planning, and instead of dying, you stole its purpose. But what marks you as touched, what you flail at rifts, I crafted to assault the very heavens. Beg that I succeed, for I have seen the throne of the gods, and it was empty. If I'm dying, it's not today! Corypheus used the orb to open the breach. Unlocking it must have caused the explosion that destroyed the Conclave. We must find out how he survived. Faith in you is shaping this moment, but needs room to grow. There is a place that waits for a force to hold it. There is a place where the Inquisition can build, grow. Skyhold. They arrive daily from every settlement in the region. Skyhold is becoming a pilgrimage. If word has reached these people, it will have reached the Elder One. We have the walls and numbers to put up a fight here, but this threat is far beyond the war we anticipated. But we now know what allowed you to stand against Corypheus. What drew him to you? He came for this, and now it's useless to him, so he wants me dead. That's it. The Anchor has power, but it's not why you're still standing here. Your decisions let us heal the sky. Your determination brought us out of Haven. You are the creature's rival because of what you did. And we know it. All of us. The Inquisition requires a leader, the one who has already been leading it. You. Are you insane? They expect a savior, someone with divine power. They want you. Because they think I'm chosen. They believe you are chosen because of what you have done, what you have inspired in all of us. Without you, there would be no Inquisition. Where you lead us, what kind of leader you are, 
That is up to you. I will lead us against Corypheus, and I will be an ambassador. I'm an elf standing for Thedas. The Inquisition is for all. Wherever you lead us. Have our people been told? They have. And soon, the world. Commander, will they follow? Inquisition, will you follow? <laughs> will you fight? So this is where it begins. It began in the courtyard. This is where we turned that promise into action. But what do we do? We know nothing about this Corypheus except that he wanted your mark. Corypheus wants to restore to Vinter. Is this a prelude to war with the Imperium? I get the feeling we're dealing with extremists, not the vanguard of a true invasion. Tivinter is not the Imperium of a thousand years ago. What Corypheus yearns to restore no longer exists. Though they would shed no tears if the South fell to chaos, I'm certain. Corypheus said he wanted to enter the Black City, that this would make him a god. He is willing to tear this world apart to reach the next. It won't matter if he's wrong. What if he's not wrong? if he finds some other way into the Fade. Then he gains the power he seeks, or unleashes catastrophe on us all. Could his dragon really be an archdemon? What would that mean? It would mean the beginning of another blight. We've seen no darkspawn other than Corypheus himself. Perhaps it's not an archdemon at all, but something different? 
Whatever it is, it's dangerous. Commanding such a creature gives Corypheus an advantage we can't ignore. Someone out there must know something about Corypheus. Unless they saw him on the field, most will not believe he even exists. We do have one advantage. We know what Corypheus intends to do next. In that strange future you experienced, Empress Selene had been assassinated. Imagine the chaos her death would cause. With his army... An army he'll bolster with a massive force of demons, or so the future tells us. Corypheus could conquer the entire south of Thedas, god or no god. <sighs> I'd feel better if we knew more about what we were dealing with. I know someone who can help with that. Uh, everyone acting all inspirational jogged my memory, so I, I sent a message to an old friend. He's crossed paths with Corypheus before and may know more about what he's doing. He can help. I'm always looking for new allies. Introduce me. Uh, parading around might cause a fuss. It's better for you to meet privately, on the battlements. Trust me, it's complicated. Well, then, uh, we stand ready to move on both of these concerns. On your order, Inquisitor. I know one thing. If Varric has brought who I think he has, Cassandra is going to kill him. I've walked away from too many burning buildings for one lifetime. This place, though, it'll be all right. It's Inquisitor now, isn't it? That'll take some getting used to. You think it's strange to say? It's stranger to hear. Don't let it go to your head. We need you level. Everyone just got a big, hard reason to hate Corypheus. And we already did, but we didn't have a name. You're the surprise, not him. We left in a hurry, but you got into your old place. Save anything? Family Ammer. It's as stupid as it sounds. It's good to be back at work. How is this place shaping up as a forge? Better than Haven ever could be. Not the way I wanted an upgrade. But ever forward... You've got it all up and running. Your basics, like always. There's space here for... I don't know what. This place was built for something big. There'll be a job to fill it. I'll be back later. I'll be here. Inquisitor, I was just inspecting our new headquarters. Foundation cracks, nesting animals, and miles from any centers of civilization. The staff must make it presentable if we're to receive any visitors of distinction. The people coming know we just survived Corypheus and a dragon. And they must be confident we are able to do so again. The mages are showing great trust in you. They need to feel safe here. Do you not feel safe here? I've had difficulty. Forgetting Corypheus's attack on Haven. Do you know who first left to arms? Our workers. They were so proud of our cause. Corypheus simply cut them down. So much screaming after that first blast of fire. So many people turned to ash. We lost far too many good people to that monster. I'm sure they'll find rest with the Maker. Well, before I return to my duties, Allow me to congratulate you on your appointment as Inquisitor, my lady. I will now bring diplomatic issues to your attention, and I'm more than happy to help with any situations that arise. You don't have to be so formal just because I'm Inquisitor now, Josephine. Our allies and guests should see you treated with every courtesy, Inquisitor, especially considering the newness of your office. Fortunately, after your courage at Haven, it's no difficult task to do so. Ah, Inquisitor, you have finally come into your own. The Maker has put you on a difficult path. I pray you walk it safely. I remember our talk out there before we found Skyhold. It wasn't just the Maker who put me on this path, was it? The Inquisitor could never have been Cassandra, or Leliana, or me for that matter. We are too political, 
too tied to the Chantry and all its failings. But I did not make you stand against Corypheus. I did not make you risk death to save the people of Haven. Only you could be the Inquisitor. I only pray the power of the Inquisition is enough. We're long past the time for prayers. We are never past the time for prayers, Inquisitor. The Maker has chosen you to deliver us from Corypheus. You have the faith and support of everyone here. Never forget that. Now, was there anything else? Can you tell me anything about Corypheus? I know nothing of the man personally, but the Chant of Light speaks of what he claims to be. No matter their power, their triumphs, the mage lords of the winter were men and doomed to die. Then a voice whispered within their hearts, shall you surrender your power to time like the beasts of the fields? You are the lords of the earth. Go forth to claim the empty throne of heaven and be gods. That was one of the old gods speaking in their dreams? Yes. You met as I understand it. In secret, they worked magic upon magic. All their power and all their vanity they turned against the veil, until at last it gave way. That sounds like what happened with the breach. Very similar, Inquisitor. Above them, a river of light. Before them, the throne of heaven waiting. Beneath their feet, the footprints of the Maker, and all around them echoed a vast silence. But when they took a single step toward the empty throne, a great voice cried out, shaking the very foundations of heaven and earth. Corypheus said he found only chaos and corruption. The Chant of Light says that it was beautiful until the Maker himself spoke. And so is the Golden City blackened with each step you take in my hall. Marvel at perfection, for it is fleeting. You have brought sin to heaven and doom upon all the world. Corypheus seemed so certain that he heard nothing. He described it as dead whispers. Bitterness, perhaps? He paid a high price for his crime. Violently were they cast down, for no mortal may walk bodily in the realm of dreams, bearing the mark of their crime. Walking bodily in the realm of dreams is exactly what Corypheus said he did. But the mark... Could it be related to the mark I bear? I cannot say. Perhaps Andraste saw clearly and we misinterpreted her words. It was always taught that the mark they bore was the shape of Darkspawn. Bodies so maimed and distorted that none should see them and know them for men. That is all I know of your adversary, Inquisitor. That's nothing but myth and legend. Myth and legend that matches at least some of what your adversary himself said. You want a literal truth, and I cannot fault you for it. I would as well if I faced such a foe. A century from now, your own story may be another verse. And who knows how much truth it will hold. Still, I would trust these words over any spoken by Corytheus. I hope they help you. So, Inquisitor. It is Inquisitor now, right? Remember that war we talked about stopping? Full of little baddies I can stick with little arrows. That's not a friggin' archdemon, is it? Andraste, what do I step in? Odd that you'd ask Andraste over your own gods. My gods? Whatever. They don't talk any more than she does. Not like she's supposed to. I know what happened to you, or what everyone here thinks happened. It seems... I don't know what it seems. I can't help you if you don't explain what's wrong exactly. It's got to be nonsense, doesn't it? What kind of screwed if it isn't? I mean, that Corypheus thing. A magister, right? Story is, he cracked the Golden City. But that's a hazy dream. If not, seat of the Maker, real thing. A seat needs a book, so the Maker, real thing. Fairy stories about the start and end of the world, real things. It's too far, isn't it? I just want to plug the Skyhole rubbish so I can go play. You joined to help the little people caught up in this. But do you believe or not? In Andraste? Of course. But you doubt what you're seeing and hearing? It can't be true, true. 
Even fanatics don't want to be this right. Look, I have arrows. I can make this Corypholus believe in those. Good enough? Please be good enough. Keep calling it nonsense. That perspective will keep the Inquisition grounded. Oh, I can do that. Sure could use a few more people shouting no. We fight, the bad things go away, everyone calms down, and everything goes back to normal. A nice, well-paid normal. You're starting to not sound completely crazy. I know, scary, innit? So bring him on. But first, food. I'm starving. It was a mistake to use Haven as a base of operations. The town was completely indefensible. I didn't choose Haven. Cassandra and Leliana did. Accepting a bad choice blindly is hardly a virtue, darling. You left yourself vulnerable to attack. It was a miscalculation, one that I'm sure you won't repeat. But the enemy struck a serious blow against you and the Inquisition. We must recognize that. You must. For every person I saved, two more were cut down. I failed them. You haven't failed them, my dear. The men and women who fight for you gave their lives for a great cause, and they fought to the end. The rest still fight, and you will fail them if you give up now. Our enemy advances, Inquisitor. We must not sit idly by. Act first, and teach them to fear us. You can become the leader the faithful require, but you must do it soon. This thing is not a stray puppy you can make into a pet. It has no business being here. Wouldn't you say the same of an apostate? Inquisitor, I wondered if Cole was perhaps a mage, given his unusual abilities. He can cause people to forget him, or even fail entirely to notice him. These are not the abilities of a mage. It seems that Cole is a spirit. It is a demon. If you prefer, although the truth is somewhat more complex. Cole warned us about Corypheus at Haven. He saved a lot of lives. And what will its help cost? How many lives will this demon later claim? In fact, his nature is not so easily defined. Speak plainly, Solas. What are we dealing with? Demons normally enter this world by possessing something. In their true form, they look bizarre, monstrous. But you claim Cole looks like a young man. Is it possession? No. He has possessed nothing and no one. And yet he appears human in all respects. Cole is unique. Inquisitor. More than that, he wishes to help. I suggest you allow him to do so. What do you mean by possession? Spirits and demons cross over from the Fade by attaching themselves to something in this world. But Cole has willfully manifested in human form without possessing anyone. The demons who came through the Breach or through the Rifts weren't possessing anything. These demons were drawn through against their will, driven mad by this world. But Cole predates the Breach. From what we can tell, he has lived here for months, perhaps years. He looks like a young man. For all intents and purposes, he is a young man. It is remarkable. I should hear what Cole has to say for himself. Where is he now? If none of us remember him, he could be anywhere. Haven. So many soldiers fought to protect the pilgrims so they could escape. Choking fear. I can't think from the medicine, but the cuts rack me with every heartbeat. Hot, white pain. Everything burns. I can't. I can't. I'm going to... I'm dying. I I'm... Dead. You're feeling their pain. It's louder this close, with so many of them. Would you like to go somewhere more comfortable? Yes, but here is where I can help. Every breath slower, like lying in a warm bath, sliding away. Smell of my daughter's hair when I kiss her goodnight. Gone.
cracked brown pain, dry, scraping, thirsty. Here. Thank you. It's all right. She won't remember me. You're using your powers as a spirit to help people. Yes. I used to think I was a ghost. I didn't know. I made mistakes, but I made friends, too. Then a Templar proved I wasn't real. I lost my friends. I lost everything. I learned how to be more like what I am. It made me different, but stronger. I can feel more. I can help. If you're willing, the Inquisition could use your help. Yes, helping. I help the hurt, the helpless. There's someone. It hurts, it hurts, it hurts. Someone make it stop hurting. Make her, please. The healers have done all they can. It will take him hours to die. Every moment will be agony. He wants mercy. Help. All right. Help him. It's all right. I want to stay. Send men to scout the area. We need to know what's out there. Yes, sir. Commander, soldiers have been assigned temporary quarters. Very good. I'll need an update on the armory as well. Now! We set up as best we could at Haven, but could never prepare for an archdemon, or whatever it was. With some warning, we might have... We were all shaken by what happened. If Corythia strikes again, we may not be able to withdraw. And I wouldn't want to. We must be ready. Work on Skyhold is underway. Guard rotations established. We should have everything on course within the week. We will not run from here, Inquisitor. How many were lost? Most of our people made it to Skyhold. It could have been worse. Morale was low, but it's improved greatly since you accepted the role of Inquisitor. Everyone has so much faith in my leadership. I hope I'm ready. You won't have to carry the Inquisition alone, although it must feel like it. We needed a leader, and you have proven yourself. You responded quickly to the attack on Haven. Without that, so many more would have died. I'm grateful for any help you can give. Thank you, Inquisitor. I will do everything I can to ensure the security of our people. You have my word. So, this is Skyhold. Come, let's walk the ramparts. I want to examine our fortifications. We'll be able to see Corypheus coming from miles away. He's not going to get the better of us again. We lost good soldiers that day, loyal men and women. Let him come. I swear I'll take the Twister Bastard down, even if I have to die to do it. You see this as a personal insult, don't you? If it's not personal for you, maybe it should be. The people flock to your banner, eager to fight for the Herald of Andraste. Their faith is a leash, and your Inquisition has taken hold of it. Tell me honestly. Are you what they say you are? Andraste's chosen. I wish they'd understand that I'm really nobody. You're somebody. Don't you see what you are to them? Without you, they'd be consumed by despair. We all would. They need you to be Andraste's messenger. It gives them hope. The truth doesn't matter. Ah, uh, listen to me talk. Your time is valuable and I've wasted enough of it. Brilliant, isn't it?
One moment you're trying to restore order in a world gone mad. That should be enough for anyone to handle, yes? Then, out of nowhere, an archdemon appears and kicks you in the head. What? You thought this would be easy? No, I was just hoping you wouldn't crush our village like an anthill. Sorry about that. Archdemons like to crush, you know. Can't be helped. Am I speaking too quickly for you? You don't need to worry about me. I can keep up. Yes, I noticed that. Did you know? Certainly. If you were a slack-jawed yokel, you'd already be dead. I always assumed the Elder One behind the Venatori was a Magister. But this is something else completely. In Tevinta, they say the Chantry's tales of Magisters starting the Blight are just that. Tales. But here we are. One of those very Magisters. A Dark Spawn. Who does the Imperium say started the Blight? You know how it is. Not us. They say Dark Spawn were always there. Magisters and the Blight aren't even related. Is that a surprise? No one wants to admit they shit the bed. But if Corypheus is one of the Magisters who entered the Black City and he's Dark Spawn, what other explanation is there? Why does that make you angry? Because the Imperium is my home. I knew what I was taught couldn't be the whole truth, but I assumed there had to be a kernel of it, somewhere. But no. It was us all along. We destroyed the world. Last I checked, the Blights hadn't actually destroyed the world. Not for lack of trying. If they were more clever, they'd have unleashed something that would really do the job. <laughs> no one will thank me whatever happens. No one will thank you either. You know that, yes? We don't know what will happen. Nobody does. An optimist! <laughs> Such a rare breed. I've stumbled upon a unicorn. All I know is this. Corypheus needs to be stopped. Men like him ruined my homeland. I won't stand by and let him ruin the world. Oh, and congratulations on that whole leading the Inquisition thing, by the way. Greetings, Inquisitor. That is your title now, yes? I should thank you. The way things ended in Redcliffe, you could have demanded anything you wished. Yet you chose to make us equal partners. I was not expecting that. You rebelled for good reason. I'm pleased to hear you say that, Inquisitor. <laughs> I've been a Grey Warden, Grand Enchanter, leader of a rebellion, and now... I am none of those things. Odd where fate takes you, as you are no doubt well aware. You were once a Grey Warden. Mine is an unusual circumstance, Inquisitor. Normally one is part of the Order until death. But long ago I found myself stripped of what made me a Warden. They tried to reinitiate me, but nothing worked. Nor could they figure out how it happened. So I was sent to the Circle of Magi, the first Warden ever to be kicked out. <laughs> Quite the achievement. You sound happy about it. Becoming a Warden seemed like a dream when I was first conscripted. Towards the end, however, my brothers and sisters, they felt I had somehow cheated death. I was glad to leave. It also made me unique in the Circle. I had an opportunity to do more than I ever could as a Warden. You mean you began the Mage Rebellion? I pushed for our vote to free the Circles of Magi. But I cannot claim sole responsibility for what followed. Still, despite all the chaos, I would do it again. What happened had to happen. You're not still the Grand Enchanter then? Any claim I had to the title ended along with the Circles of Magi, although some still call me by it. Perhaps the Circles will one day be resurrected. If so, another will take the position. Until that time, I lead my fellow mages by default. I will do what I can for them. You believe they'll recreate the Circle of Magi after all this? It depends on who the next Divine is, and what she offers. 
We can't go back to the way things were. But endless warfare benefits no one. That is why I agreed to Justinia's conclave. There must be another solution. I've been meaning to ask, how exactly did the Venatori take control in Redcliffe? Mages constantly found their way to us while we were there. Stragglers. Most of them strangers. I had no way of knowing some were actually to winter. They spread whispers, encouraged talk of an alliance, and we were desperate. I'm not proud of our choice, but we were certain Templars were coming. It could have ended far worse. I'll leave you to it. Before you go, Inquisitor, a question. In Redcliffe, after we left, did you perhaps speak with King Alistair? Considering who you are, he wasn't in the mood to talk. It's just that I knew his father, Marek, back when I was a warden. And what? You were hoping that would patch things up with him? No. It's too late for that. I only wanted to know if he was happy. His father had such hopes for him. Don't mind me, Inquisitor. The concerns of an old woman. Nothing more. I'm sorry. So am I. The names of those we lost. You must blame me for this. We all saw who attacked us. We know exactly who to blame. I keep wondering if I could have done something different. When the first of my lookouts went missing, I pulled the rest back, awaiting more information. If they'd stayed in the field, they could have bought us more time. I was afraid to lose my agents. And instead, we lost Haven. You look out for your people. That's a good thing, is it? My people know their duty. They know the risks. They understand that the Inquisition may call upon them to give their lives. Our people aren't tools to be used and discarded. Your instincts were right. Their lives matter. Can we afford such sentimentality? What if Corypheus... We are better than Corypheus. I need to know more about Corypheus. We spoke of this on our travels to Skyhold. What more can I tell you? Cassandra and Varric seem more familiar with their adversary. You've given me good counsel before. I could use some now. My apologies, Inquisitor. My poor manners shame me. I claim no secret wisdom, but I will guess as best I can. I would like to know more about the orb he carries. As I said, that must be the means by which he created the breach. I suspect the blast that destroyed the Conclave was more accident than anything. The result of unlocking power that had sought release for ages. What I cannot understand is how he managed to survive such an explosion. You said that you believed the Orb is Elven. I never would have believed that a Vinter Mage could unlock such a powerful relic. It clearly enhances his abilities, giving him access to power he should never have known. Like the power to control the Archdemon? Indirectly, one assumes. Nothing in any law connects my people to the old god dragons who became archdemons. What can you tell me about the source of Corypheus's power? According to the law, the ancient magistars of the Vinter received guidance from the old gods. Corypheus commands a false archdemon, a corrupted old god. This suggests he no longer sees himself as their minion. Some of his unique power comes from the corruption of the Blight. The rest may come from the orb he carries. What do you think Corypheus will do next? You shamed him when you destroyed Haven. It spoiled his glorious victory. It would be worse to acknowledge that you had done so. He must continue on his course or show weakness. He will return to his plans to throw Ole into chaos and then conquer it for Devinter. You're sure that's what he'll do? As certain as is possible. Assuming I can plausibly predict a man who seeks to rise to godhood. And can you? The key is understanding this. No real god need prove himself. Anyone who tries is mad or lying. His deception will undo him, as it has done countless fools before.
We'll talk later. Goodbye. Scout Harding. Your worship. Shouldn't you be out there, scouting? In a bit. We're in Skyhold for supplies and a change of personnel. Not me, though. Indispensable. <laughs> so, who's Scout Harding, really? Me? Oh, I'm no one. Lived near Redcliffe all my life. Herded sheep for my neighbor. When the Inquisition came through my village, I helped by telling them everything I knew about the area. Then I signed on. Wanted to see the world before it was swallowed up by... that... thing out there. What's been going on? Seeker Cassandra came through here, looking like a storm cloud. That's just her face, though, isn't it? Have you met this friend of Varric's, Inquisitor? Not yet, no. It had better not be who I think it is. I will wring that little bastard's neck. Why? Who do you think it is? Someone Varric claimed he could not contact. Someone the Inquisition, indeed all of Thedas, desperately needed. I'll reserve judgment until I know for certain. No need to have that rogue screaming persecution yet again. Inquisitor, meet Hawk, the champion of Kirkwall. Though, I don't use that title much anymore. Hawk, the Inquisitor. I figured you might have some friendly advice about Corypheus. You and I did fight him, after all. You've already dropped half a mountain on the bastard. I'm sure anything I can tell you pales in comparison. Oh, I don't know. You did save a city from a horde of rampaging Kunari. I don't see how that really applies. Or is there a horde of rampaging Kunari I don't know about? There's a Kunari. He almost qualifies as a horde all by himself. Fortunately, he's on our side. So then, what can I tell you? Varric said that you fought Corypheus before. Fought and killed. The Grey Wardens were holding him. And he somehow used his connection to the Darkspawn to influence them. Corypheus got into their heads, messed with their minds, turned them against each other. If the Wardens have disappeared, they could have fallen under his control again. If that's what happened to the Wardens, do you think we can free them? It's possible. But we need to know more first. I've got a friend in the Wardens. He was investigating something unrelated for me. His name is Stroud. The last time we spoke, he was worried about corruption in the Warden ranks. Since then, nothing. Corypheus would certainly qualify as corruption in the ranks. Did your friend disappear with them? No. He told me he'd be hiding in an old smuggler's cave near Crestwood. If you didn't know about Corypheus, what were you doing with the Wardens? The Templars in Kirkwall were using a strange form of lyrium. It was red. I'd hoped the Wardens could tell me more about it. Corypheus had Templars with him at Haven. They looked like they'd been exposed to the lyrium you describe. Hopefully my friend in the Wardens will know more. I appreciate the help. I'm doing this as much for myself as for you. Corypheus is my responsibility. I thought I'd killed him before. This time, I'll make sure of it. You said you thought you killed Corypheus. The Grey Wardens had him imprisoned. They used my father's blood in a ritual to seal Corypheus inside. But he could still reach out and influence the Warden's thoughts. He sent them after me. And I didn't just think I killed him. When the fight was done, he was dead on the ground. Maybe his tie to the Blight somehow brought him back. Or maybe it's old Tevinter magic. But he was dead. I swear it. I heard you had family and friends in Kirkwall. Where are they now? My brother's a Grey Warden. I had my friend Aveline take him as far from Orlais as possible. When all the Wardens started acting strangely, I had to keep my family safe. Isabella and I never believed in being tied down. When I had to go into hiding, 
she understood. We'll see each other again. Until then, she'll be having fun. And hopefully not too much fun. I assume Varric's been feeding you information about the Inquisition. What did he say about me? Only good things, I promise. I was a little surprised, actually. Varric isn't one for religion in general, but he thinks highly of the Inquisition. I think the exact phrase was, has a good shot at fixing Blondie's mess. I'd like to know more about Anders. What was he like? I don't know if there ever was just an Anders. He was crazy. By the end, there was nothing left in him except this insane need to start a war no one could win. And where did you go after the Majors rebelled? I heard the Chantry might be sending an exalted march to Kirkwall to put down the rebellion. I hoped that leaving would save lives and force the Divine to divide her forces to come after me. As it turned out, I needn't have bothered. All the circles started rising up, and the exalted march never came. We'll talk later. I'll meet you at Crestwood. You knew where Hawk was all along! You're damned right I did! You conniving little shit! You kidnapped me! You interrogated me! What did you expect? Hey, enough! You're taking his side? I said enough! We needed someone to lead this Inquisition. First, Liliana and I searched for the hero of Ferelden, but she had vanished. Then we looked for Hawk, but he was gone too. We thought it all connected, but no. It was just you. You kept him from us. The Inquisition has a leader. Hawk would have been at the Conclave if anyone could have saved Most Holy... Varric's not responsible for what happened at the Conclave. I was protecting my friend. Varric is a liar, Inquisitor. A snake. Even after the Conclave, when we needed Hawk most, Varric kept him secret. He's with us now. We're on the same side. We all know whose side you're on, Varric. It will never be the Inquisition's. That's unworthy of you. I must not think of what could have been. We have so much at stake. Go, Varric. Just go. You know what I think? If Hawk had been at the temple, he'd be dead too. You people have done enough to him. I believed him. He spun his story for me, and I swallowed it. If I just explained what was at stake, if I just made him understand... But I didn't, did I? I didn't explain why we needed Hawk. I'm such a fool. What if you hadn't believed him and you'd tracked Hawk down? Honestly, Hawk might not even have agreed to become Inquisitor. He supported the Mage Rebellion, after all. He wouldn't have trusted me for a second. But this isn't about Hawk, or even Varric. Not truly. I should have been more careful. I should have been smarter. I don't deserve to be here. Have you looked at our Inquisition, Cassandra? We're all fools here. <laughs> Is that supposed to make me feel better? More at home, maybe. <sighs> I want you to know. I have no regrets. Maybe if we'd found Hawk or the hero of Ferelden, the Maker wouldn't have needed to send you. But he did. You're not what I'd pictured. But if I've learned anything, it's that I know less than nothing. That got a little heated. Are you all right? Well, that depends. How angry is Cassandra? I wasn't trying to keep secrets. I told the Inquisition everything that seemed important at the time. I know, Varric. You never would have kept quiet otherwise. I keep hoping none of this is real. Maybe it's all some bullshit from the Fade and it'll just 
disappear. I know I need to do better. I'm sorry. Impressive, is it not? Fit for a leader, meant to show influence and the burden of it. It is where the Inquisition will sit in judgment. Where you will sit in judgment. Who will I be judging exactly? Those who have done wrong. You will know of them, at the very least. All this presumes they have survived their initial encounter with you, of course. Still more lives in my hands. You are a beacon of law, Inquisitor, as others retreat from responsibility. But this needn't be bloody. The Inquisition's sovereignty is derived from the allies who validate it. You are both empowered and bound. Justice has many tools. If their application is clever, execution may even seem merciful by comparison. Is there anyone I should judge? Take the throne when you're ready. We will bring him before you. This was a surprise. We discovered this man attacking. The building. With a... Goat. Chief Movran the Under. He feels slighted by the killing of his Avar tribesmen, who repeatedly attacked you first. What should we do with him? Where should he go? You answered the death of your clan with a goat? <laughs> a courtroom? Unnecessary. You killed my idiot son. And I answered, as is my custom, by smacking your holdings with goat's blood. Don't look at me. No foul. You meant to murder Tevinters, but got feisty with your Inquisition. A red-headed mother guarantees a brat. Do as you've earned, Inquisitor. My clan yields. My remaining boys have brains still in their heads. <laughs> it seems our conflict was accidental, Chief Movran, but it can't be repeated. I banish you and your clan, with as many weapons as you can carry, to Tevinter. <laughs> My idiot boy got us something after all. <laughs> Why am I dressed like this? You'll see. Come on, it'll be worth your time, I promise. Evening. Iron Bull. My merc band just joined up. Tanner. I'm from Jader. Well, near Jader. Mira. I was gap captain for Lady Pendel. Signed on after shit blew up at the Conclave. Share a drink? Who's your friend? This is Grim. She doesn't talk much. Huh. So, you ready to kill some demons? Or Venatori, or whatever that Corypheus asshole is? This isn't just about killing. We're helping the Inquisitor save the world and build the next empire. Hmm. Well, long as I get paid, I'm happy. That's why I signed up. I just couldn't spend my whole life on a farm. Needed to live a little, you know. What about you, Mira? Why'd you join up? I thought you were serving some noble. I saw what happened at Haven. The Inquisitor staring down that monster and his archdemon. I don't sing the chant of light as much as I should. But you can't see something like that and not believe. Well, Grim and I should find our tents. Thanks for the drink. I know every soldier under my command. You don't have that option. But a few faces might help. You made it sound like you didn't like the Inquisition. People don't always tell the truth when you're polite. You've got to poke them a bit. But those two soldiers might think you're an asshole. So? I knew some of the soldiers felt like that, but to actually hear it. It's hard to be just an idea sometimes. That's all you are to most of them. It's why you could stand right in front of them without being recognized. You've got a good army coming along. Remember that. 
no matter what comes next.